Hold on for a second, guys. I forgot to get my questions out of my sub screens. Well, hey there, guys. I'm Axel Beast, and this is the Curiosity Shop, the ZeldaEngine.net video mailbag where I answer your Zelda questions. All right, so our first question comes from Josh. Which do you like better, the Wind Waker or the Wind Waker HD? All right, so I talked about this before, but it was so long ago that it might as well be in its own timeline. Um, uh, I know more about the Wind Waker HD than I do about Majora's Mask 3D because that was during my time. And uh, though I haven't played it yet, I'm, I'm very, very familiar with some of the changes. So, eh, so uh, this is a bit of, maybe a bit of a controversial statement, but to me, the Wind Waker is the most flawed Zelda game. Uh, to such an extent that I think that its problems are substantial enough that Band-Aid fixing things like they did in the Wind Waker HD doesn't really solve the game's big problems. Yeah, okay, so you sail faster, but I don't think the overworld is that well put together to begin with, so getting to places faster helps, but doesn't fix anything. Um, that said, while there are other Zelda games that, like the Wind Waker, I hold as less than other ones, uh, there are very few that do anything so well that it elevates them at all, and Wind Waker, I think, has one thing, one specific thing, that it does so well that it's actually the best at it out of any Zelda game to date. And that, for me, is art direction. I'm not talking art style, it's not even my favorite art style in the series, but uh, just the way everything comes together, the art style, the graphics, the character designs, the music, the storyline, the way everything comes together into one big whole is, I think, the best, like, cohesive art direction to make the game feel like a cartoon and so many other things at the same time um, that I don't think any other game matches its ability to bring all those things together and make one, like, every artistic element of the game feels like it belongs with every other. And I don't think there's any other Zelda game that pulls it off to that extent. So, as much as, you know, the Wind Waker HD's graphics are better, I don't think it matches the original in appearance just because of the things that they changed, the little things that they changed from what they did in the original, which might seem arbitrary, but in the original everything went together perfectly, and it's aged great, it still looks good. I don't think the Wind Waker HD looks as good as the original, as weird as that sounds to say. Higher definition, absolutely. Um, you know, some things look better, but I think that the art direction was a little better in the original, just slightly, but enough. So I think I prefer the original. Is that, is that the wrong? Is that the wrong opinion to have? Narian asks, "What Zelda game has your favorite art style?" All right, so there. <laughs> well, I talk about what my, isn't my favorite art style. I guess we don't have to get to that. Um, so for me, I think it really is Skyward Sword, which is probably one of the things that contributes to how much I've enjoyed that game over the years. Um, you know, it's it brings back that kind of mesh of cartoony and uh, realistic that the original, which is more or less an anime look. Uh, that was in Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, and which Twilight Princess technically had, but did different things with. And it also did the really cool Impressionist stuff. I guess, you know, Skyward Sword looks a little bad on HDTVs these days, but... I don't know, I, I just thought it had a really cool style, and I'd love to see something like that with the Impressionist vibe going on. It made the, sh the, the textures and everything look really cool, I thought. And it also, I thought it was really cool how, like, the draw distance thing was handled by making things fade into an Impressionist abstractish style in in the distance it's things like that that kind of i kind of miss about a lot of the older games because like in the turok games you have fog covering up the draw distance but i think it defines turok having fog and darkness everywhere and i feel like skyward sword is actually really cool having that element and i'd like to even see them do that in a game that has better graphics and doesn't need to do that to handle graphical issues and i don't know i, I really like skyward sword but you know ocarina of time majora's mask and their 3d counterparts would be like a close second maybe possible sort of tie but that's just me. How about you guys? Spirit asks, is Breath of the Wild set in a post-convergence era of the timeline? All right, so I'm a bit fuzzy on this theory, I'll admit, but uh, the gist, as I understand it, is that because so many aspects of Breath of the Wild, um, you know, seem like they come from various games in the Zelda series, you know, the way the Temple of Time looks, this and that, uh, and from different timelines in particular, it pulls things from so many different games, that uh, maybe it takes place after, like, the timelines all merge together into one or something. But that doesn't really make sense unless you do a game that specifically tackles the idea of, like, mechanics of time travel and the timelines merging. And even then, it's not simple because uh, Twilight Princess's timeline, the, the child timeline, exists because of Link traveling back in time at the end of Ocarina of Time. So it's an actual split in the timeline. Canonically, these two things both happened. However, the downfall timeline, where uh, Link uh, died defeating Ganon, uh, is a 
blatant alternate reality. It's not just two different timelines that split and are going parallel. It's a completely alternate re reality based on a what if, not a thing we know happened. Um, so they can't even all merge in a way that even makes sense. And uh, even beyond that, you know, okay, so I don't think so, no, to give you a straight answer, finally. Um, because, but I'll admit that there, I used to be not in favor of the timeline split theory until I found out that it was confirmed by the developers around Twilight Princess. And then, of course, they went further and confirmed a third splitish timeline. So my word may not be good for much, but I'm not in favor of most theories that don't have a lot of basis in the games themselves. And I don't think having that many things from that many different games really counts, because they do those because they are significant for a specific game. There are all kinds of inconsistencies with that stuff throughout the series. Um, you know, the Temple of Time isn't even in... The Master Sword isn't even in the Temple of Time in The Wind Waker, which is the sequel to Ocarina of Time that most directly relies upon Ocarina of Time. is in Hyrule Castle. Whereas in Twilight Princess, the Temple of Time is almost completely reproduced, even though it doesn't actually come off of the story of Ocarina of Time that much. I feel like Breath of the Wild has so many places, just so it can have so many places, just to fill up the space and have the fan service of, oh my god, that's Lake Floria from Skyward Sword! Which is literally my reaction when I got to the Far Run Range and found Lake Floria. Yigahim asks, do Four Swords, Four Swords Adventures, and Triforce Heroes deserve to be on the timeline, and why? They deserve to be on the timeline because they are. It's a chicken and the egg kind of thing. I mean, it's it's really that simple. What deserves to be on the timeline is just what was made with the timeline in mind. I guess with that in mind, Four Swords probably wasn't made with the timeline in mind. Look, I don't like the official timeline very much. There's a lot of weird things about it. I Hyrule Storia's official timeline is just, eh, you know, it's, it's a little, it's a little, it leaves some things to be desired. Um, I think they're inoffensive being on the timeline because they don't matter that much for it. Four Swords Avengers has some interesting implications because, according to Hyrule Astoria, that's a completely new Ganon. Every other Ganon is some kind of, like, future version of the one from Ocarina of Time, I guess, kind of. That's actually a new one. It just has the same name because I guess it's the Gerudo King name. Um, and that has interesting implications. There are other things, too. The Triforce Heroes has some interesting implications on the timeline. I figure they design... They deserve to be there as long as they don't damage things, like Hyrule Historia does. <laughs> uh, but uh, as long as they're inoffensive or they add interesting ideas, sure, why not? Keanu asks, I've noticed that as more time passes, fans claim that they think Skyward Sword is one of the weaker games in the series now, despite the game receiving a lot of praise by critics and fans at the time of its release. Do you think, now that almost seven years have passed, what are your thoughts on Skyward Sword? Do you still love it, or has your opinion also changed? So, uh, yeah, to, to get straight to the point this time, um, yeah, I, I still am a big fan of Skyward Sword. I haven't played it in a while, so, you know, maybe it'll change if I play it again, but, uh, no, no, I, I'm, I'm still a big fan of it. I actually still enjoy it, personally at least, better than A Link Between Worlds. Not judging it next to Breath of the Wild just yet, but, um, yeah, you know, um, this is one of the weird things for me, being con for so long, because, okay, pre-release, everyone was like, eh, it doesn't look that great. I mean, there's this weird split for some people who are really optimistic, and then people who are, like, really skeptical. Then when the game came out, yeah, okay, so yeah, there was a lot of people praising it, but it actually had a fair amount of critics, and it seemed like a lot of people who really liked it on release, their opinions deteriorated as the game was out longer. That's what I noticed, anyway. And then now, actually, despite what you say, I feel like I've seen a lot of people like, eh, it had some merits, you know, that, that seemed to be like, it's... People are calmed down about the game. I think that's what's happened. It's sort of interesting. But no, yeah, I'm still a big fan of it. It's a, it's a good game. I like it. It's kind of a story. But it's, you know. Duelmark asks, Do you think that there should be more female villains? Varen and Lady Maud are the only two. Punarver and Sia don't really count for me due to the former being servants again while Varen was doing her own thing and Hyrule Warriors is non-canon. Well, I don't know. I think that they add some to the series anyway. Um, with regards to uh, there being more female villains, you know, I, I don't, you know, like, the Zelda series is very much based on the old fairy tale of the princess gets saved by the hero from the dragon or the evil wizard, and those are usually male characters, but they don't have to be, and the Zelda series have deviated from that a little stronger in some areas, like the sci-fi mech thing going on in Breath of the Wild, so, you know. Um, yeah, you know, I have no issue with it one way or the other, just do what fits the game, don't, you know, force something in there because you want to fit a demographic. Uh, unless you build the game around it correctly, and that's all I have to say. Don't f just make what works for a game, or make the game work for what you want to do in it. Oracle of Ages fan asks, I've enjoyed playing slash watching Mossy's play fan-made Zelda games. 
What would you think of Nintendo releasing a Zelda game where you could design at least your own dungeons, if not a whole game? Um, so basically a Legend of Zelda Maker thing. You know, Mario Maker was weirdly popular, like, excitingly so, considering I love level editors, which should answer your question, yes. Um, you know, I would love to play that. I would love to make stuff. I'd love to play other people's stuff. I had the idea once of an MMO with, you know, a Zelda MMO where you explore dungeons, but also there'd be an editor where players make and share their own dungeons. You don't need an MMO to do that, though. In fact, it might be better if you didn't. But bottom line is, yes, yes, give me that, please. The True Red Link asks, would you like to see more familiar faces in the next Zelda title? Yeah, you know, sure. I mean, this is similar to the villain question. You know, do what works for the game. Some games try to have a lot of, you know, fan service. You know, Zelda has a lot of that kind of thing, you know, references to older titles. It's all very cool. And some games are particularly referential. Uh, Link Between Worlds and Majora's Mask are two odd examples, although they, you, you know, they have different reasons. Like, Majora's Mask particularly has a, a weird reason for all the recurring characters. Um, but, you know, uh, some other games, I think, falter doing that. Like, I think Twilight Princess had too much attention on Ocarina of Time. And I think a lot of the more recent games have tried, like Skyward Sword and, uh, you know, Breath of the Wild have tried to get away from that. And they've created some really cool characters and a lot of fun moments that I'm a really big fan of. So, you know, just do what works for the game. Don't try to include characters or get away from characters for its own sake. Do, you know, what works. Eh. Alright, the last question comes from Hylian Evan. Uh... Would you want Fi to be in a future Zelda game? Um, alright, okay, so this is on the opposite end of the spectrum. I mean, sure, if it works, I guess, technically, but, okay, I'm a big fan of Skyward Sword, really, and, um, without dropping spoilers, the way that game concludes, and the way Fi's story in that game concludes, and y'all know what I'm talking about here, I feel like that's a good note for the character, and I actually feel like it would take away from that a lot if she showed up again. Um, and I feel like that's how you just need to leave it, I think. I think that, that, yeah. Leave her alone. Leave Fi alone. Well, all right, guys, that's it for this time. And like my name says, I am a beast. And I am hungry. And I need to be fed. Fed with Zelda questions. Feed me! By sending them to the contact information in the description. And I'll see you guys later. You know, I, I said, I told myself I was going to shave for every video, but it's just not going to happen every time. This time you're going to get some rugged Axel. Sure, it's too bad I didn't do that in any of the mailbags where I focused heavily on the Zelda game where all you do is explore the wilderness.